Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be playing another game at Two Don. We're going to get up to Four Don one of these days. I know it. Recently, I started playing a little bit more on KGS, which has been kind of fun because I'm learning a little bit about uh, <laughs> playing handicap games. So I made a review for YouTube members that I posted. Uh, it would be yesterday, technically. <laughs> By the time most people are watching, it would be the day before this video came out. Uh, if you're interested in seeing some of those, I'm going to be posting some random reviews of just games I'm playing for fun on other servers for YouTube members, along with the other content I'm doing, such as uh, pro games every so often, Golaxy content every so often, and just whatever, whatever sort of pops up. Let's get into it. All right, I am white here in this game. Let's see if they stay. All right, they played a move. That's good. We had someone playing a Chinese earlier. Let's see if they do it again. Nice, nice, nice. I'm going to approach. See if they do the same thing. No, they didn't. They didn't do the same thing. I'm going to play the old Joseki here that you would see once in a while. Just for fun. You can really sort of play whatever you want in the opening. Uh, whatever you feel like doing, just do it. In this case, I think this turns a... Uh, I think this is usually okay. I think generally... You, I think the old Joseki was to just block it all and take a thick outside position, but this should be fine too. I don't really want to give him an easy uh, position, so I will pincer this. If they take the corner, I get the influence here. And I'm happy with this. They also get Sente. And I can just go straight to this corner if I want to. Or I can enclose my side over here. I think there's not really a good approach move to the upper left. They probably will just take the corner. So I am going to play this fun attachment here. This is a typical way now of dealing with a Chinese opening. Uh, but here, uh, they extended to make it a little bit easier on me. And so I will jump. And I probably don't even really need another move, honestly. <laughs> but I could play again. I think I will play this two space jump. The idea being if he pushes and cuts here, there's a ladder going over to this side of the board. And I want to stay flexible on in his area. Again, I probably don't need to respond. I want to point that out. I don't necessarily have to respond to a lot of these moves because I already have a very flexible position. But I will respond just to have a very solid position. Solid as in no obvious weakness that they can exploit easily. Wow. They're just, they're just playing uh, really, really simple. I kind of appreciate that. One move that they can get that would be quite annoying for the shape here is this uh, Q6 move, or even just Q7. While it's not really hurting me too much, it's just a nice territorial gain and damaging my shape a little bit. So I could decide to play down if I want to. So let's do this just to make this into a living group now and make sure they can't really get too many points here. So the left side is very flat. So I want to block here to keep that left side very flat. Uh, we probably don't need to Hane. You usually will Hane if it's, this is on the fourth line. So that way you're poking underneath their position. But here we can just extend like normal. I think I would like to follow up right away. This gives me a little bit of a benefit in the corner and it prevents them from getting too much here. And I'm just going to make an extension from my wall. I'm not betting on a bunch of points here, just doing a basic extension. Oh, wow, they're playing in the center here. That is interesting. It looks like now I can probably make points here, whereas I wasn't really able to before. Uh, which side is the weaker side? I think they're both fairly strong, honestly. The place that they can connect to most easily would be the right side of the board. 
and there's this pretty far extension here. So I think what I want to do is I probably want to play towards this side. I want to sort of separate this from this as best I can. And so that will be my main goal here. Normally, you'd want to bump my shape, uh, make me extend, and then defend the cutting point. So I'm tempted to peep here first. If they connect, it becomes an empty triangle shape, which is good. And then I can come back and defend my shape here, which feels really nice. And I can jump, just take this as territory. And I'm still uh, doing fairly well on dividing this area. Oh, wow, they are going to take the uh, Hane there, which is very big. But what they aren't really focused on is this area, which has weakness in it. So if I go low, they can attach here on top. And it becomes a little bit, mm, a little bit weird to separate, but it probably is fine. If I play high, they can attach underneath and just sort of give this up. I think I will play low here, apply a little bit more pressure to this group itself. The idea here is we want to try to separate the stone or just destroy the area. So we're going to Hane. And normally, like I said, you usually want to play this move to separate. Uh, not to separate, to take away the tiger's mouth. I got distracted because what I'm going to do is separate instead, I think. So if we play this move, they can potentially turn over the top and we would come underneath here. And I guess it's still possible to play this one. But if I play this one and they jump over here, it's adding a little bit more weakness to me. So what I want to do is I just want to push instead. If they cut, we give it up and don't worry about it. If they do this one, though, we can connect. And this stone is very nicely separated. We've got a very large benefit here. Wow. And we're still able to Hane at the head of two and three stones. Very comfortably. We do the double Hane. And then just defend our shape. This is making this group in the middle very weak. And they're too focused here on this territory. But in this case, we want to separate so that we're all connected. Just connect. Nice and simple. I'm just going to stay connected, not worry about it. I'm not really sure what Black is doing, honestly. But I know what we're doing. We're attacking Black. This group is just a blob of stones that doesn't have any eyes. So it needs to live somehow. So we are just going to play the shape moves to force it out and defend ourselves. We don't want to have to worry about any cutting points. I don't know. I think either one's fine. And they're jumping here, and I don't. I still don't really understand. Because in this case, we can attach here and cut through the shape. Because we have a stone nearby. Normally, when you get this sort of position, you either want to wedge or connect. If we wedge and they just connect here, I think it strengthens them more. So I will just connect. I want to leave this weakness in their shape. And you'll see now they have two weak groups on the board. We have one potential weakness here, which we can turn to fix if we wish. And I think that will probably be what we want to do, or we can jump here try to fix it as well. They peep, we just turn, and we're connected. Maybe jumping here could be the more fun way to do it. Maybe get a couple more points in the center, who knows. Hmm, Black is pushing up there, which is very interesting because this is where the weak group is. I could Hane. But it seems like what white, uh, what white, what black probably wants to do is pull back here and cut me off in some way. I think to make things a little bit simpler, I'm going to jump back 
we're attacking this group. We're not going to worry too much about Black trying to push from this side. It uh, looks like we don't really have to worry about the Hane here. We have enough liberties on these stones. So we're just going to connect here. Now we're out towards the center and Black needs to live. And that was just uh, reducing their own liberties. So that was questionable. And I guess Black is giving up the stones, which is probably a good idea. So we'll just take them. And we can just push through here. I said, just taking these stones from Black. We can just cut here, I think. Looks like it. If we want to play a little bit better, we can probably do something else, but mm, let's just cut. It's hard to choose. Because when we Atari here, the group has a little bit of an issue. We have a little bit of an issue too, which is why I was thinking about doing something else, but I think this is good enough. So we can just capture these stones. He can Atari in here. And uh, as I said, there is this as a problem. Oh, but uh, did not do it properly here. When you're in this sort of liberty fight, you definitely have to take the liberty. If you pushed here, it was a little bit of a difficult situation. But now we're able to jump and not worry about it as much because the crane's nest only works if there's a stone here at the uh, L12. So we're able to just jump. We can also jump from this side potentially, or we're just going to jump here. Black doesn't have that many liberties, and Black's nice to live on the other side. They're really, really trying to attack, but we can just stay connected on this side. Yep, and we just stay connected here. Because they have a cutting point that they have to worry about. So we can just pull back. And I think we can connect here. Or we can do one more. We'll just do one more. This cut doesn't really matter too much. This group has a really strong eye shape and liberties already. And we just need to connect up our groups and not worry about it. Uh, this wedge is a little bit questionable. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. So the only thing we really need to worry about here is if our group's in danger. It doesn't really look like our group here is in danger. So this cut doesn't really matter. Uh, can this group live? Maybe it can. We'll, we'll use the Bioyomi here. If it lives, does it matter? Is the other question. I don't know if it really matters because this group here on the outside is weak. So what I want to do to sort of fix a lot of issues at the same time is capture these two stones. This allows me to jump here towards the center and attack this group again, and makes it so that they can't use any Ataris here to try to make any eyes locally. OK, so they're wanting to cut. So we can just defend however we want to here. I don't know the best way. Do this one, do this one. This one threatens an Atari. So sure, let's play this one. And we'll just connect. Still threading the same Atari. This group has more than enough ice space here. Uh, they're going to cut from the other side, which is interesting. We'll just stay connected. And so do we need to worry about this? Well, if we let him play here and break into this territory, maybe try to attack this corner group. So let's just defend the shape on top. If this is all dead, it doesn't really matter. We just want to stay safe as best we can. OK, he resigned. That was good. I think that was actually kind of an interesting game. But I want to highlight one little mistake that I made. It wasn't probably going to lose me the game. But I do want to highlight it because there was a better way to play there. Uh, so we open up the review board and make it look proper. Give me, give me a second. There we go. <laughs> if we go back here, uh, I did make a little bit of a mistake here. I can 
do this Atari here. But if I'm if I was playing a little bit more of a I'm, I was going to say serious game, but I should say a higher ranked game, the better way to play here is actually to push this direction. If they just jump out here, I am able to attack these stones instead on the top here pretty easily. And I can even potentially get some more moves here for free. Maybe they want to play like, it's actually kind of hard to find the proper shape. This seems like the best shape here, but there is still some Aji. So it just depends on the group on the bottom here. Let's say I just live. This is a really obvious living move. If they try to come out too much here, we're just taking away the territory. We don't lose any territory here, and we're just going to win fairly smoothly. If we look at the score estimate here, I'm going to say I'm ahead by about 20 points because Black didn't gain anything. Black's just losing points here. Even if I don't end up killing this middle group, what I am doing is just getting rid of all of the territory, and that's good enough. If I can live without having to play another move, then this is even better for me because it's likely that this group is uh, potentially just dead. <laughs> it's actually a, a little bit questionable on <laughs> if this group can live here. Uh, just this, and I think this group is surrounded, and it's going to be difficult to easily make two eyes while threatening me enough for it to matter. So you have to be a little bit careful. But I think this bottom group is in a little bit of trouble, so I'd probably have to read it out and decide. But just something to keep in mind here. I wanted to play, I just felt like playing this way. And it's not going to lose me the game, but if Black does just push here and capture these stones, they fix both of their weak areas, and I, I can still reduce this side. And I'm still likely winning by, de by enough. A decent amount, 10 points maybe, instead of the 20 points. But the safer way to play is to push through on this side. Attack this group here and live with your group. Just get rid of the points and live and play simple. So I try to always promote, but I was feeling a little bit bloodthirsty when I shouldn't have because they could have just killed my stones. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are having a great day. Have fun.